So basically, uh, this is me discussing the modifications to my 2000 Mustang that are about to take place. Uh, this is for Coyotify.com, uh, which is a website I, I set up specifically to document people's coyote builds. Um, one of our models will be no assholes allowed, so all comment, um, comments that you put on Coyotify will be guaranteed not to be met with uh, stupid comments you know, in reply because anything that's off topic or abusive or just plain stupid will be deleted. Um, so love free speech and all that stuff, this is my website. It's really going to be for people that want to discuss and create things. As long as you're on topic, I'm not going to mind any post. Um, anyways, uh, this is the car that starts it. This is my 2000 Mustang GT. Um, I'd like to talk about the modifications that I'm going to be making to this car. Um, in essence, uh, this motor, which has served me really well, and is still running good, actually, or still running well, I should say, um, is a 4.6 liter single overhead cam motor that came in the car the day that it was born. Um, recently, I had to reach it, re replace the intake, uh, but that's the only thing that's ever been done to it. That's even the factory alternator that has been on it since it was brand new. Um, I had to put a new starter in it. Uh, let's see, I changed the transmission because uh, I'd been a shifter fork somewhere around 125,000 miles. Um, the ABS uh, quit working at about 80,000 miles, um, if I remember properly. Um, I'm trying to think, the rear end has been worked on quite a lot. Uh, right after I got it, uh, something went wrong with the bearings. Um, to put it, you know, in perspective, my 97 GT I drove for 85,000 miles without ever having any kind of problem with the rear end and I've known many Mustang people that abuse their cars much harder than I did and uh, so I suspect that I just had a bad set of bearings and then after that I had a really hard time finding somebody who could put the rear end back right um, so blatant plug now for Gearheads Garage in Louisville, Ohio who were the first people to actually get the rear end to be quiet um, they put a set of Ford Motorsport 373 to ones in the rear end and rebuilt it completely with uh, a rear end uh, bearing kit. And so the rear end and the transmission in my eyes are very sound. And I should say the transmission setup is exactly the way I want it with a manual shifter, uh, adjust, adjust flywheel, uh, firewall adjuster, and uh, an aluminum quadrant. Um, works extremely well. I've got a manual adjuster for the pedal height and uh, I love the way the car shifts and, in general, uh, rides and handles. It's really not bad for its age. Anyways, uh, so why would I want to change anything? So, essentially, this, this motor, um, although efficient in its day, is kind of, you know, run its length in, in my eyes is, in terms of uh, being a modern engine. Um, it's still more modern than a lot of the motors put in General Motors and Chrysler products. It's, it does have single overhead cams, and it is a fairly efficient engine. Um, I, I think I've gotten as much as 25 to 27 miles per gallon with the car recently after the gearheads folks got the rear end straightened out and the front end of the motor running properly. Um, however, I, I really love the new Coyote motor. And if I put a new Coyote motor in it from Ford Racing, I will be able to get um, better gas mileage and it will run better. Plus, it'll be a modern engine. And it, it'll teach me, or I'll have a learning experience uh, putting the engine in myself. Which, near as I can tell, has never or really rarely been done um, in a garage before, like someone's garage, like this one. Um, what's been done is people take their car to some speed shop and the magazine writes it all up and they talk about how great the engine is but they, from what I can tell, have a lot of help from other people and this will be a build where I get basically, I'm trying to do it all on my own with uh, the help of a certified Ford mechanic, a friend of mine by the name of Dustin Milbrandt and of course the FFRP, FRPP folks themselves. Uh, so, um, all of this will be up on coyotify.com. Um, let's talk about the actual changeover next. Uh, can't see the fuel system from here, but it's underneath that spare well.
putting in a uh, completely different fuel tank. The fuel tank is from a uh, 94 to 98, uh, 97, excuse me, Mustang. And it's a totally different fuel tank in, in that the uh, sending unit and the uh, fuel hat itself are different. Um, mine has a fuel hat that goes here where this one does, but it's a lot larger uh, bolt-in unit, and it's only got one line going to the front of the car. So it's actually an inferior uh, fuel feeding system, and if you want to increase the fuel pressure with the system that I've got in the car, it's extremely difficult. Not, on, not only that, but the uh, fuel neck on my car rusted out about four or five years ago, and I did some work to get it right, but uh, it's not perfect. And so I've got an older style fuel neck that has nowhere near the rust on it that I'm going to treat with 415. And I'm going to put a completely different fuel system from a high performance fuel that will help me um, gain the fuel pressure with the return that I need. Plus the high performance fuel people assure me that they're building a fuel system for this car that will go right directly, bolt directly to my new edge uh, uh, body locations and, and hook up directly to the new Coyote motor that goes in. Um, so that's the fuel system. The stock K-member, which you can't really see, it's underneath this engine, is uh, too big. It, it takes up too much space for the Coyote motor. The Coyote motor has um, long tube or short tube, short tube headers that come tuned from the factory. And from reading online, a lot of people are essentially taking them off and putting on a set of headers from BBK that are long tube headers, assuming that they're going to get more horsepower. But uh, Ray from uh, Ford Racing Performance Parts assures me that they are no one is going to get better horsepower than the shorty headers that are perfectly tuned to that new motor. So I'm going to leave those headers in place. And where it interferes with the passenger firewall, which is basically right behind there, I'm going to use a sledgehammer and smash that part of the firewall in a little bit so that the um, headers will clear. And, of course, make sure that all of that's coated with some kind of rust inhibitor or even cut and welded if I have to. Um, my stock exhaust system will mostly work except for where it connects to the motor. I have a, a person lined up who's going to basically make the exhaust system components that are changeable because I have a Bassani X-pipe that comes apart in pieces. The front pieces will be uh, swapped in for ones that work directly with my Bassani and the, the Coyote. Um, let's see what else. That's exhaust and fuel. The engine electronics, which are in the kick panel of this car, the PCM, in other words, for the car, um, which you can't see in this video, but it's essentially right there underneath that kick panel. Um, that will have to be changed as well. So that kick panel, uh, pardon me, I'll keep that PCM and I'll wire the pieces of it that tell the engine to start and run uh, as the, the sending in for the new, the sending wires for the new PCM, which is going to go where this air breather is. So this uh, stock overflow bottle is in the way of the new Coyote's breathing area. So it will have to be moved, and I'm planning on rotating it 90 degrees and moving it here. Um, hopefully there will be enough space for it. I've seen people do it in other builds. That's my plan, is to get it out of the way of the breathing and uh, retain it, because it's still a decent piece of plastic, and it would be crazy for me to throw it away and buy a new one. Um, the PCM will go underneath that water bottle in this location for the Coyote, and it will be wired, as I've said, to the factory PCM. This battery has to go out because that's where the new air box for the engine goes. So I'll be putting that battery, um, taking it out to pasture, actually. Um, there's something wrong with it anyhow. Uh, I'll be putting in a set of, a pair of uh, Optima batteries. Um, let's take a look at those guys. They're six volt batteries. I'll be wiring them in series, and uh, this is what they look like. I've already checked the dimensions. They'll fit, um, although I do have to move some parts in order for them to fit. But essentially, they are going to be in the spot of space of unused space today in the back where my uh, convertible top, uh, it's unused underneath the convertible top and behind the trunk here and behind the seat. So there's a little bit of space there that I can put my batteries in. They'll be completely out of the way. 
and be perfectly over the rear axle. I've already figured out how I'm going to mount them basically using PVC pipe and some creativity and some zip ties. Um, of course I'll have to do my own battery relocation kit but that doesn't look like it's too much. I'll be running the, the battery uh, wires to the front uh, connecting up where this battery does grounding a lot along the way so that my chassis is well grounded. Uh, I'm going to keep the stock Hydro Boost and power steering which is a problem because the new Mustangs do not have power steering. They've got electrically uh, controlled steering and or a boosted steering and they've got vacuum boost for the brakes so and also their engine bay is bigger which is why you know they can get away with it but this engine bay is too small for uh, the new motor with a vacuum boost so I've got to keep my hydro boost and basically I, I may end up turning it uh, 90 degrees so that it'll uh, allow for uh, the motor but we'll see. I'd like to leave it as, as stock location as much as possible um, anyways, the uh, to to run the hydro boost is a problem because there's no place to bolt the the pump, which is down underneath this uh, filler thing that you see me training the video camera on. Um, so that that pump will go with the motor, where I'll sell it on Craigslist. And um, to make it work, I'll be putting a pump roughly where the camera is aimed right now and having new lines made. So I've got to get a whole new set of lines made for that hi that new Hydro Boost uh, setup, power steering. I'm going to retain my stock power steering rack, but everything on the K-member changes to accommodate the, the Coyote. I have purchased a UPR Chrome Molly K-member, which is in a box right now, but it's that box if you really want to know. Um, and for the most part, um, I'll have uh, same suspension, except it'll be coilovers. Excuse me, I, I'll have different front suspension and the same stock rear suspension. Um, I'll retain my stock candor, my uh, aftermarket camber caster plates, which are Steeda, and um, I plan on keeping that cross member brace that you see in the in the camera feed there. Not sure yet. It all depends on whether or not the engine will fit underneath it. So, um, what else is going to go on here? I plan on pulling this uh, anti-lock braking unit out. Um, the brake lines will have to be re recut and reformed so that I have uh, uh, shorter brake lines um, and I get rid of that unit. It's costing me weight and it's in the way and uh, it hasn't worked in 125,000 miles or so, so it's, or whatever it was, 90 miles, 90,000 miles. Why keep it? Um, going to yank the airbags. There's one underneath the driver's uh, steering wheel and there's one underneath the passenger uh, dashboard area. Those are going to come out. There's an amplifier that I have yet to pull underneath this stereo that's going to come out. Um, of course all of the wiring for the new battery setup will have to be run forward. Uh, gosh. Um, so fuel system, K-member, Oh, gauges. Okay, so the factory gauges, as I've previously mentioned and whined about on my blog, are actually just idiot lights for the most part that are controlled by the PCM. And they're, they're set basically so that you feel good whenever you look at your gauges. You see, oh, hey, look, the oil pressure is slightly over half and the engine temperature is slightly under a certain amount, so it looks cool. But those spots are where the PCM decides to put the temperature and oil pressure so that you feel good. And honestly, that, that's just crazy. I mean, I've got a brand new motor I'm putting in. I want to find out. I want to know what my oil pressure is. I want to know what the temperature is. I want to know, um, you know whether or not the thing is charging or not. No big deal. I can understand that I, I don't really care if it's 12 volts or not as long as it's charging. But um, it would be nice if they actually told the truth. So I'm putting in a, a new set of, a new oil pressure gauge is going to go here along with the fuel pressure gauge in the, in the column. Down there where you see two gauges underneath the shifter today, um, there'll be three for temperature. One will be for the engine temperature and the other two will be for the differential and transmission, which will allow me to get a, a better idea if, if I'm pushing the transmission or the, the rear end too hard. Um, so, those are the modifications. It's a quite extensive list. Um, 
a lot of the car stays the same. Mainly the engine changes in the fuel system and the front K member. Um, but a lot of this, the electronics get kept, and uh, it should be uh, uh, quite a, uh, an improvement um, and allow me to keep my car for another few years and enjoy it. And uh, so that, that it, once again, um, I'm Paul Ferris, and, and this is Coyote FI. And uh, if you want to know more, go to www.coyotefi.com. That's C O. Y I T 